my name is uh, John Lim. I'm currently a lecturer at Nanyang Polytechnic in the School of Information uh, Technology. Okay, so uh, why do I join this profession? Now, um, I my current profession is really uh, two, two aspects, all right? You can look at it from two aspects. Uh, I joined the IT profession uh, initially, having uh, studied uh, computer science at the NUS. And uh, at that point in time, I had every intention to join the IT industry. I did not really expect to go into education, um, but um, really it was uh, after my uh, second job that I uh, came across an uh, advert by Nanyang Polytechnic and I thought, why not? I, I, get, I actually give it a try. <laughs> okay, so uh, lo and behold, uh, after I joined in the year 2000, uh, okay, I graduated roughly around in 1996 uh, and I've been working for a number of years before I finally landed a job at Nanyang Polytechnic. Now, the reason why I end up, ended up staying here for, I think, about 20 years for now, uh, by now is that uh, it really gives me two, as two, um, um, two broad perspectives into, into how I practice uh, IT. For one thing, I'm a very uh, inquisitive person. I like to learn about uh, new things, and that's probably uh, why I stay in the IT industry. And the other angle, of course, is the, uh, the opportunity to, to interact with younger uh, young, young people, right? train them into the and induct them into the IT industry. And in doing in uh, in order to do so, I need to continue to learn more. All right. So so I guess it is uh, this uh, this opportunity to to learn uh, interesting and, and exciting technologies that uh, you know I do, I never felt felt so uh, very bored in my in my job in my twenty years at the polytechnic. Uh, I have uh, come 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 and uh, come across many technologies and and knowledge. Uh, many of them have actually become obsolete. But no matter because there are new stuff to actually to learn. Um, just going back a little bit to my first job. Um, all right. Uh, so uh, I, I had every intention again to actually. Uh, you know, I was imagining myself the IT profession is more or less a, a, a coding job, and uh, yeah, it was something that I like to do as well. But uh, I didn't really end up in a coding job, and uh, uh, pretty much ended up doing uh, some kind of a project management. But here and there, I do find some time and opportunities to, to tinker with the stuff. Lah. Things like uh, so, uh, system administration, you know, um, if I need to, if there's some problem with the web application that, that the company has, I can I actually go in there to tinker myself. A little bit of risk, lah, huh? because uh, if things don't work well, then, then somebody's head must roll. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I, I, I do get my opportunities to, to work things out even without having to activate the the vendors in that sense. And then, uh, yeah, I was also, uh, I would think that I learned quite a fair bit of uh, stuff in my first job because I had the opportunity to be exposed to, like I mentioned earlier, system administration, uh, having some opportunity to do some uh, uh, simple coding as well. And also to learn about, you know, the internet. In those days, uh, internet was uh, kind of uh, up and coming, but it's still not as, as, um, uh, you know, as uh, developed and, and as, uh, you know, uh, particular about security as we do today. Um, well, uh, I got into the cybersecurity profession uh, area, all right, pretty much uh, around 2003. And um, yeah, it was kind of by accident uh, because when I was studying in, 1990, in the early 1990s, um, there was no such thing as security. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And when I went out to work, um, security wasn't the, the, the key focus of, uh, in the industry. Uh, in fact, that was uh, at that time it was like the Y two K part, all right? Some of you who are older, or rather, you may heard from your friends or or your seniors, uh, about this Y two K part. So uh, that, that that was the in thing then, uh, all right? So, um, well, uh, the foreign to cybersecurity was really um, something that is quite accidental. But um, I have come forward to this to what I have done today. Uh, partly because of course, uh, by my involvement with Asaka, which uh, I today I represent as one of the of the representatives from this uh, from the local Singapore chapter. Yeah. So uh, let's look at the second question. How does your day at work look like? Um, so one of the key uh, advantages of being a lecturer is that uh, pretty much you're on your own. <laughs> okay, you're pretty much on your own. Uh, we, while well, I have uh, scheduled lessons, but I also need to do uh, various uh, administrative tasks. Mm, sometimes we get the accidental uh, or rather the unexpected uh, things that are happening. Sometimes it could be issues with students, sometimes, sometimes uh, it could be the, or of course, regularly there we have the things like exams and stuff. So every day is a kind of a different 
different from the other days. <laughs> okay, yeah, it brings with it uh, its own level of excitement. Of course, we do have our period of uh, lull. So during the mostly during the holidays, there will be lull period whereby we will be hunkering down, doing uh, development of the materials as well as to learn new new technologies. And that's why I pretty much enjoy uh, about about my current work. All right. Um, so what do you like about your work? All right, so um, I think I mentioned a pretty much a large, some part of it earlier, the, the, the flexibility to learn. Uh, in fact, you're being rewarded to, to, to learn, <laughs> to continue to learn. Okay, I think the challenge in the polytechnic is really to uh, uh, develop the knowledge that is uh, industry standard, that is industry standard, all right? So I can say that uh, Asaka gives me the opportunity to, to, to learn from the, my friends who are in the working, working in the industry. And uh, really, you need to go forward and try to uh, interact with, with, the, with the industry practitioners. Uh, otherwise, the work that we do in the polytechnic can be, can, can be uh, disjoint and could be uh, not so realistic as what the, 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 the industry demands. Okay. Anyway, we are also training professionals for the industry. Yeah? All right. So, so uh, I think the, being involved in uh, organizations like Asaka gives me that, that edge. Of course, the polytechnic itself also has arrangements whereby uh, lecturers can be attached to certain uh, companies to as an attachment to work for a couple of months. You know? yeah. So I was fortunate enough to be attached to IBM in Canada, Toronto, uh, for about uh, three months, way back in 2006, I think. Oh, yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, there are opp opportunities like that. Uh, of course, we get to do our, uh, I mean, uh, regular duties like chaperoning students to overseas uh, back when there was no COVID. Uh, I uh, brought a group of students to the US, Silicon Valley. So we visited Google, uh, Oracle, all the, and, and some of the, you know, um, uh, those um, uh, entrepreneurship, you know, uh, startup, startup uh, kind of uh, uh, setups. Uh. So, so it was very exciting and eye-opening. And I'm sure it was for the students as well. So as a staff, you get to, get to do that. Uh. <laughs> all right. Mm, what, what do you feel can make your job more fulfilling? Mm, I'm pretty much pretty comfortable I, where I am right now. I suppose the fulfillment part is kind of by accident, yeah? being able to train and interact with young, uh, young people and as well to, as, to, as to play a part in the, in the, in the induction into the industry. Uh, the other aspect for me really is the, also the opportunity to, to teach uh, working adults. Yeah, so as a... The mission of the Polytechnic is, uh, has changed somewhat to, to uh, help Singapore to, to train their working uh, professionals, okay? Even as you no know, technologies change, knowledge change, uh, job requirements change as well. So we need to continually upgrade. And like I mentioned earlier, I also enjoy learning to upgrade myself, okay? So, so in that sense, uh, you know, um, uh, I, help, I see my job as uh, helping, uh, helping to uh, consolidate knowledge, relevant knowledge, and then imparting this knowledge in a form uh, to, that is uh, easy to understand to, to working professionals, to help them to actually gain new skills to work in the new industries, okay? So uh, in terms of the skills and subjects that help me, uh, this is the next question. Uh, I will say cybersecurity is, is something that, um, uh, well, it was fortunate that I came across it and I, and I just kind of uh, dived into it. And uh, cybersecurity back way back in 2003, it was not so developed yet. Lah. Okay, but uh, it was anybody's guess at that point in time. Uh, so nowadays, uh, you will see that the cybersecurity has become pretty much uh, entrenched in the in the in the in the IT industry, and also in the in the whole in the uh, I mean in the in the in in the whole working world or the or the cyber world, so to speak. Okay, yeah, um, you cannot uh, avoid. Uh, not talking about cybersecurity, even as we utilize the internet and technologies to enhance business and also to to change the way we interact. And uh, the way we, we, we shop and, and, and purchase things, huh? Okay. Uh, what can last question? What can young students do if they want to know about what this profession? Well, uh, I think uh, I have met my fair share of young students, uh, who probably around the third year they would be asking lecturers about, you know, <laughs> what is it like to be a lecturer? But uh, probably because it's a polytechnic, uh, yeah. Once they graduate, they mostly have to go through uh, NS, and of course, uh, for the guys, and of course to the to the university. Um. Uh, they still had a long way to go, yeah. But uh, uh, I would say uh, teaching in the IT IT uh, domain uh, can be quite challenging in terms of the, the the constant need to to learn new things and to develop your your skill set. Okay, 
Yeah, so in that sense, uh, if you want to know more about this profession, I guess the best thing is to talk to somebody who is teaching, okay? Um, uh, um, uh, well, we, we have, a, I, I do have some colleagues in the, in the Asaka, right, who, are, who are members of Asaka, who are also like me lecturers for many years. Uh, some have come in for a few years and went out back to the industry again. Um, yeah, you could talk to them as well. Huh? So teaching is a very different thing altogether. Yeah, uh, the polytechnic system in Singapore is a very unique thing uh, across the world. Yeah, you probably wouldn't find uh, something that's similar. Uh, although they are, sim they are kind of uh, somewhat identical kind of uh, training uh, in, in other countries. But the, the polytechnic system in Singapore is uh, a unique on its own. And I think I'm quite proud to say that, uh, you know, today polytechnic uh, diploma is, is so well developed that uh, universities accept it as a form of uh, acceptance into their undergraduate courses as well. So, so the, the scenery, the, the landscape for, for polytechnic graduates has been, has changed a lot. Okay, has changed a lot. And, um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, the best way to talk to a local polytechnic lecturer. Lah, huh? But like all organizations are uh, being in a polytechnic is also being part of a bigger organization. So um, you cannot escape from, you know, being part of a team, trying to become part of a team player, uh, you know, um, uh, making yourself useful in an organization with uh, hierarchies, hierarchies, okay, uh, structures, you know, reporting structures, and that kind of stuff. There's, there are also human to human interaction. I think, in particular, for lecturers, because our job is so um, so independent, um, uh, we need to forge relationships with one another. Okay, so um, I would say that one of the key skills you should have as a as a lecturer is to is to be able to make friends. Okay, work with your fellow colleagues. Sometimes you need their help and sometimes you need to offer your help too as well. Yeah, so, so that's one of the things that is quite different from, from uh, the industry because uh, probably if you're working in a normal, in a regular company, you would have very strong, you know, um, structures like uh, you're part of the team to, to work on the project. You know, you, you, there's a very uh, strict hierarchical uh, kind of uh, reporting structure. But really, as a, as a lecturer uh, in a polytechnic, uh, it is kind of a kind of it's really kind of very flexible. But being flexible means that you also need to have a certain kind of skill set to to so so called to so called survive in this uh, environment. And I find that that key skill is to actually uh, create relationships with people. Okay, not only just uh, the learning part, but also uh, creating the uh, making friends and uh, helping one another. Out, okay, because uh, you you can help each other, and uh, you make your job much more easier. All right, and much more smoother as well. All right, so uh, that's it. All right, so my name is uh, John Lim. I'm, I'm representing Asaka Singapore chapter. Um, I've been working 20 years in the Nanyang Polytechnic as a lecturer, and I'm focusing on uh, cybersecurity. Thank you.